Welcome to the Corel series of tutorials on using selection tools in PaintShop Pro. This one will cover the magical magic wand tool located in the selection tool flyout of the main toolbar. Before we get started, you can download the sample images I'll be using so you too can follow along. We'll go over the many options available to the magic wand, then show you a couple of examples of actually using it. The magic wand selects based on the color, hue, brightness, or opacity of an object. This tool is designed to select an area that has distinctly different pixels than those in other areas of the image. For example, a pink rose surrounded by green leaves, or a bright area in an otherwise dark image. Therefore, this tool works best when the area you want to select stands out from the rest of your image. Otherwise, you might get frustrated when the tool also starts selecting parts of your image you don't want it to, so keep that in mind. The magic wand offers many various criteria for creating a selection. These choices appear in the Tool Options bar after selecting the Magic Wand. Let's take a quick review of them. Under None, this option will select the entire image when I click Anywhere. Selections are identified by the moving dotted line around the selection border. This border is commonly referred to as the Marching Ants. Note, to deselect the entire area, do a Control D. To add pixels to a selection, hold down the shift key. To delete areas, hold down the control key and click. Another note, the following modes will also select based on the tolerance level you've selected here. Higher tolerance levels will select more pixels. To make sure we can see the mode differences the best, I'll try to click on the same part of this flower each time I try a different mode. I'll try to go through these rather quickly as I recommend you try them yourself to see the differences up close and personal. Let's try RGB value. This one here selects pixels that match the red, green, and blue values of the pixel you first click. I'll use a low tolerance, around 20. Deselect and then use a higher tolerance of maybe around 70. A higher tolerance allows me to select almost all the yellow portion of the flower, but not the red parts. I'll deselect again. Let's try color. This one selects pixels that match the shading variations of the pixel you clicked. I'll try a high tolerance level, and then a lower tolerance level again. Let's deselect and try brightness. Brightness selects pixels that match the perceptual lightness value of the pixel you click. Notice when I try this mode at a higher tolerance, it actually picks different colors but sticks to similar lightness values. This is especially noticeable if I click the red part of the flower. It picks not only red values, but other colors that meet the brightness value of that red, which is darker than the yellow. What it won't do unless contiguous at the top is deselected is jump to and select other areas with similar values. The entire selection here is connected. If you want additional areas, hold down the shift key to add additional areas or control key to subtract an area. Otherwise, any new click will replace the previous one. I'll show you the effects of contiguous a bit later. Let's try perceptual. This one selects pixels that match the perceptual brightness and shading variation of the pixel you click. It's pretty close to choosing brightness. Traditional. This one, similar to the RGB value mode, selects pixels that match the red, green, and blue values with a bias towards the lightness variations. This match mode is therefore more discriminating than the RGB value match mode. Because it's called traditional, it's the most common mode that people use. Let's try all opaque. This selects all the pixels that are not completely invisible, that is, having an opacity value of 1 or greater. Choosing this option will disable the tolerance control. If I click in this image, it selects every pixel, as every pixel has an opacity value. Under the Opacity mode, 
This one here selects pixels that match the opacity value of the pixel you click. Great for working with transparent images. Great, so this should help you distinguish the various selection modes. You'll start getting the hang of these as you try them yourself. Let's go over the other options in the toolbar for using the magic wand. I'm going to return to the traditional mode. Tolerance here controls how closely the selected pixels match the pixel you clicked in the image. I used this earlier. At low settings, only very similar pixels are chosen. At higher settings, a wider range of pixels are selected. Feather softens the edge of a selection by specifying a fade width, somewhere between 0 and 200 pixels. Here's a comparison. If I use all layers, this searches for matching pixels across all the layers in your image. Contiguous selects only pixels that connect to the pixel you click. Anti-alias produces a smooth edged selection by partially filling in pixels along the edge, making them semi-transparent. You can use this option inside or outside the selection marquee. So what's the difference between feather and anti-aliasing? Well, from what I can tell, it's oftentimes difficult to see until you zoom. Anti-aliasing makes an edge look smoother by making the pixels fade out to transparency from an edge while feathering blurs the pixels. And one last edit option I'd like to show you is to how to add really small holes to your selection that would otherwise be too small to try and shift click on. If I create a traditional selection on this flower and use shift click to add the red parts, I still have quite a few smaller areas to add. In this case, I'll go to Selections, Modify, Remove Specs and Holes. I'll start with some small areas such as 10 by 10 pixels, but it's not much help. If I go to 100 by 100, all the smaller holes are now added to my selection, and I'll click OK. Finally, let's see how this tool works on images containing hair. I'll bring the image of the brunette woman to the forefront. In the first selection tutorial, I touched on the auto selection tool. It's so awesome that it bears repeating again. I simply draw a marquee around the woman and her hair. If there are parts I want to add or subtract, I can then return to the magic wand to do so using the shift key to add or the control key to subtract. Okay, I think that does it. I'll grab the pan tool, right click on the image, and copy. Then I'll right click again and choose paste. Paste as new image. Okay, that came out pretty well. If there are more parts to delete, you can now also use the actual eraser tool to do so. In conclusion, the best way to learn about these modes is to just experiment with them. Let undo and control D become your friend and try different modes and tolerance levels. You soon find your favorite ones to use and how to get the results you want quickly. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on the Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial to follow along and find other helpful tutorials for working with transparencies in PaintShop Pro.